Hey, it's Kevin Tofel with GigaOM, and I just got back from a five mile run. It's a nice, beautiful day where I live out in Pennsylvania. Got my shower. I'm on camera here. Why am I here? Not to talk about my run, but to talk about the Wahoo Fitness Blue HR heart rate monitor. The first Bluetooth 4.0 uh, heart monitor that I've ever used. Uh, wanted to show you what it looks like and how it all works. Um, it's Bluetooth smart. This is a new Bluetooth 4.0 profile. And we saw a lot of this at CES. People were talking about all the Bluetooth 4.0 devices that are coming. This is among the first. Uh, why have Bluetooth 4.0 and we have 2.0 and 3.0? Well, this is low uh, power, basically. So this battery that's inside here will last one to two years. And I mean, that, that's fantastic. Uh, it's got great connectivity, up to 10 feet unobstructed. And actually, this will save my heart rate if it loses the connection to my iPhone. Now, I mentioned the iPhone because right now, this is the only phone supported by this heart rate monitor. I know that the Motorola Droid has, uh, the Droid Razor rather, has Bluetooth 4.0. It is uh, Bluetooth Smart Ready as well, but I don't believe this is compatible with it. So when I run, I have to run with this if I'm gonna use this. So let me just take it out of the box and show you. I mean, I kind of repackage it for you, having just ran. And it's really a simple bit of packaging here. Let me get a little closer here. You've got the actual, we'll call it a Bluetooth pod. Um, this is lightweight plastic. In the back side, there's a little uh, button there that kind of holds the the battery. It's basically a, a watch battery, a three volt watch battery that goes in there. So you can just turn that and replace it if need be. And then that goes on to the adjustable strap, which is hand washable. And you can see hopefully that on this strap, let me bring it back here, there are these pads right here. There's one here and there's one here. And those attach to your chest. You wrap the entire thing around your back and then the pod actually snaps on to the strap. Just a simple snap. Of course, I've got it backwards, so it's not so simple right now. And then I dropped it, and then you're good to go. You have to imagine that on your chest. And basically, it's kind of like a little portable EKG. It's monitoring your heart rate, and then it works with certain apps. There's a free app for, uh, for from Wahoo on this. Uh, works on the iPhone, and then there's a whole bunch of other apps. Let me get the list here so I don't overlook any. Run Meter, Run Keeper, Map My Run, Motion X, Runtastic, and Demondo, and then Wahoo Fitness, which is included. You get it free in the App Store. So I actually use this with Run Keeper only because I've been using Run Keeper for the last year and a half, maybe two years now. So, and on my run, it worked really well. Um, let me show you a little bit more about this. In fact, let me show you how it actually fits on here. You just uh, on, hang on a second. What do you mean I can't show them that? I mean, how many people have seen a 122 pound blogger with perfect pecs? Uh, all right, behind the camera, they're telling me don't do it. So I don't know. Can I at least show them the data that you get from the? Thank you. Gee, everybody wants to be a director. All right, well, we'll scratch that. Let me show you what kind of data I just got from the run I just ran. Okay, now that my run is over, I've uploaded the information to my RunKeeper account. And you can see this run was five miles. The GPS tracks that, obviously it always did. There's the duration, the average pace, just under eight minutes, uh, average speed, how many calories I burn, the total elevation climb. And then here, this is new for me because I haven't used a heart rate monitor, is my average heart rate of 159 beats per minute. Now I can go through the map and, and see all the information here. But more important to me is this information down below. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. This is actually the data altogether, elevation, distance, and time. And previously I had the blue line and the red lines, meaning my pace and my elevation. And now I have this red line, which is the heart rate. Let me see if I can get on there. It might be easier if I zoom. Let me in fact zoom to a certain area here. Okay, here we can see. So at 1.15 miles, my heart rate was 164 beats per minute. I was nine and a half minutes into my run. And so I was going downhill, heart rate started going down. Now we've got an uphill coming. I'll just kind of go a little bit faster here. Let me see if I can get, there we go. Uh, coming down off the uphill, my beats per minute were 160. I think I topped out around 170 around here. It's hard to tell, 171, 172, 173. So obviously going up this little incline and holding pace to a point, my heart rate was going up. So um, let me go back out. You can actually see, let me see if I can zoom. You can see the splits for each mile. It's not showing my heart rate here, but the 
uh, my average heart rate along the entire way was going up because my miles were actually getting faster and faster for the most part for the whole five miles. So it's an out and back loop. So all the hills I ran up, I also ran down. So it's pretty even. Now I get to see all that information, but the neat thing is as I'm actually running, let me get into the RunKeeper app for a second. Let's say hi to Happy Gollum there. And here is my run. Um, Again, this is all the information that you saw online. I'm seeing it and hearing it in real time. Let me go back and show you why. Because in this particular app, and I know other apps do the same thing, uh, what you can do is you have audio cues. And what I do is every half mile, I listen to my time, distance, and average pace. That way I know if I'm kind of on track for this mile or not, or I need to pick up the pace or slow it down even. But now I also have and had on this past run, I had the phone tell me my average heart rate, my current heart rate, and then the heart rate zone, which was really cool. Most of my run was in the 80 to 90% heart rate zone, which the application actually figured out based on its profile of me, as well as the information it was getting from the Wahoo fitness monitor. And a couple times, once I was in the 170s, it was saying I was in the 90 to 100% zone, meaning, you know, the top 10% of my heart rate zone in terms of targeting. So in any case, it's really, really neat to have that information, hear it along the way. Um, I'm gonna show you real quick. I didn't test this out yet, but the Wahoo Fitness app can do very similar things. And actually, I have a history. I actually just sat around and watched a TV with the heart rate monitor on for 10 minutes. and. It was telling me, you know, my average heart rate and so on and so forth. So you can do a lot of things with this. And I think, you know, this is great for runners. Um, but really, what's really interesting to me is that you take a device like uh, the Wahoo or any other heart rate monitor. Now you can have, a, say, an elderly person actually wear this all day long and have it connect via Bluetooth to a computer that basically sends the data to a doctor and you can have actual real-time health monitoring. Um, that's not bad. And basically this was $80. Granted, a, a phone to use it with or a PC or so on, yeah, that's gonna cost you more money. But $80 for a heart rate monitor, low power Bluetooth, that seems to work really, really well, at least in my first effort at running. Well worth the money, in my opinion, if you're interested. And I see a lot of good uses out of this for health tracking in this coming year. Expect to see uh, many, many more devices like the Wahoo Fitness heart rate monitor. You're gonna see a lot of Bluetooth 4.0, smart Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth Smart, rather, devices in 2012.